Hi, guys. I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm just testing, testing my mic over here, just seeing that's fine. Um, okay, so uh, my name is Bob Greenier. I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project, and uh, our project uh, deals with the science of low-energy nuclear reactions. And I thought I would... Uh, take the opportunity because there does seem to be some community interest and uh, I am representing a community interest company in the subject of the coronavirus. And so I just wanted to give my uh, insights uh, into Asia, which I have been visiting now for over 30 years. And uh, my uh, uh, experiences recently in uh, Vietnam, very recently, and also to discuss uh, preparations that I make and precautions that I I, uh, I will be making and uh, precautions that I would suggest you make. And also some context um, between uh, different uh, uh, Asian countries that I visited and how that might play into the uh, transmissibility of the disease and also some things that are out there. I'm not going to speculate on where the disease uh, came from, uh, other than to say uh, very th the very basics. Um, but uh, I'm going to talk about uh, masks and, and, and goggles and, and, and things like that, things that we use in our experiments that are also uh, uh, quite relevant to um, protecting yourself from this potential pathogen. OK, so. Um, where I want to start off really is um, uh, I first went to uh, China. In fact, I went to Hong Kong uh, well over 30 years ago. Uh, and I was uh, 17, 18, I think. And um, I uh, visited a friend in Hong Kong. And this was actually, it might have been earlier than that. But anyway, this was before Hong Kong was handed back to the Chinese. Um, so it was still a protectorate, uh, uh, the British uh, uh, protectorate. And um, Hong Kong actually, uh, you know, it is a very, very uh, intensely uh, packed, uh, high density population area. Uh, the amazing thing about Hong Kong is they still protected a lot of their uh, forest and natural land. Um, and so what that has done is, was because it's such a small area, it's it's even denser on the areas that are built up. And in fact, when I was there, um, the person I was staying with was responsible for draining the fisheries and, and, and building a new kind of city there. Anyway, I, I traveled to Beijing um, and uh, I was on this train. It was 33 hours from Hong Kong to Beijing. And uh, I was the, I, with my two friends, were the only white people on the entire train. It was an immense train. And uh, when we got to Beijing, uh, uh, um, I was absolutely astounded. It, it was the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in, your wor in the world. Uh, there were millions and millions. I think it was like six million bicycles going to work. Uh, and they were button, wheel to wheel, and the roads are very wide in Beijing, and uh, uh, there were just bikes all the way across the width, and it was just like a sea of bikes. But um, one thing I noticed when I, when I went out on into the um, uh, street the following morning from a hotel, I looked down, and the ground had looked like it kind of rained, but it was a bit weird because there were just like these splats. It was almost like... Uh, chewing gum splats on the ground, and I, I kind of inquired what this was all about. Why? Why are these? Uh, it looks like rain, but it's not rain. It's just splatters everywhere. And I, I was told <laughs> by uh, someone that, uh, well, actually, these are just where people have been spitting. And um, uh, what what I uh, learned over this uh, the time I was there. Um, was, uh, you know, it was, a uh, they have this, uh, or they did then, and I, I, I looked online, and I'm going to share this link now um, in the live chat, um, because I, I, I don't want to say anything about this uh, and, and unless it still went on. I mean, this was, uh, I, I'm 38 now, I think, <laughs> you lose track, um, and I, I was seven, uh, 17 then, so it's 31 years ago, um, at least. And um, uh, 
people like to spit, uh, and and they actually see um, Westerners who like blow their nose into a tissue, and and you know, so blow it, bin it, kill it, uh, uh, kind of process is quite disgusting um, for them. They actually see that as disgusting, so that they 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 see the spitting as a, a kind of cleansing process, and. Uh, I think the most shocked I was the whole time I was there was I, I was sitting on a bus. Uh, and, and in fact, when I was there, uh, this is to show you how long ago it was, there, there were no private cars, essentially. I didn't see a private car. There was a couple of government cars. I think they tended to be white. But um, there was just a couple of car government cars that you could see occasionally around. Um, and there was one <laughs> loop uh, on the underground. That was it. And... Um, uh, so this was uh, some time ago, uh, but I'm sitting on the bus and there's a guy sitting next to me and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and he spat in between my foot and his on the floor inside the bus. And so, and, and no one batted an eyelid. And so, you know, I, I was quite aware of this because I've never really seen it before. Um, it, it, it was something that I found quite shocking. And, uh, you know, later, a couple of years later, I was discussing it, and 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 uh, and I saw an article where it said, you know, if if people in China could stop their 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 habit of spitting, then you know this perpetual kind of uh, uh, condition they have with their throat would go away in a few weeks. Now, uh, as I said, I didn't want to talk about this because it was a real thing, um, and I didn't want to talk about it in, in, unless it was there. So I've actually shared the link to an article. It's actually from last year, and it gives the same example that I experienced myself of someone spitting in the bus right next to you. So like I say, they believe that it's clearing the toxins for the body. The idea of us swallowing the booger or whatever, it's just, it's just completely an anathema, anathema to them. And so um, that that's one thing that, you know, if, if you come out, you know, I've spent a lot of time in Vietnam. I've spent time in Japan. I've spent time in, in um, uh, South Korea. I've spent time in, in Malaysia, uh, in Singapore. Uh, I mean, if you spit in Singapore, it's a big fine. Uh, that doesn't happen there. And you don't see this. You just do not see this in, in uh, Vietnam, even in the countryside. And, you know, even in India, where I spent uh, at least eight and a half years living in India, you just don't see this kind of uh, uh, habit. This is something that the Chinese do, and it's part of their culture. And so what? That is that is what they do. But when it comes to the particular pathways uh, for spreading this disease, that, that can be catastrophic. So what am I talking about? Well, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about some other cultural things in, in, in the region, how different, different countries may fare better or, or worse if it actually gets a hold in those countries. But it, it, there, there is a couple of ways that you can spread a disease. Uh, uh, and this particular bug looks like, before you even show symptoms, which now looks like it's about five days from infection to uh, starting to show symptoms, you, you can possibly transmit the disease. You can transmit it whilst you're in the, 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 the throes of the disease. And then it would appear even afterwards. There's a, a st study done in Germany where they found... I think it was 100 million viable vi virus particles in one uh, uh, cc of sputum from someone who supposedly recovered. And because uh, coronaviruses are one of these type of viruses that have a protein sheath, they can survive uh, uh, outside of, of the body for a period of time. Because this is temperature dependent and so forth, and also chemical dependent. But I think in, uh, people are saying anywhere between five and nine days, this can survive. So if you can imagine that you have a culture that uh, is very happy to, to spit, now, they are spitting on the ground, but they tend to rub their, their, their shoes on it. And then they're walking with the shoes that they've rubbed their spit on. And then they're walking it into buildings. And, you know, it only takes for someone to drop something and eat it or, or, or put their bag down and then touch the underside of the bag. Really, um, it's about vec vectors. What are the really uh, easy vectors for you to get this disease? So, you know, here, here we have a disease where sputum and spit and so on can, can transmute this, uh, sorry, sorry, transmit this. You can, um, uh, when you sneeze into the environment, um, you can put thousands and thousands of droplets, millions of droplets that have a, a, an unimaginable amount of virus particles in them um, and so on. Now, 
Um, so th there's there's that. Then uh, the the other cultural aspect, and and this is common through a lot of Asian cu cultures, uh, not so much in not not really in Japan actually uh, so much um, because they tend to have little personal portions, but um, it, it it is the chopstick. Now I really like the chopstick. That I, I eat with the chopstick probably once a day. I, I have a, a an Asian wife, and uh, we really enjoy our Asian food. And and the thing about chopstick is, um, uh, I'll give you an example. I, I I was in just a couple of weeks ago. I was I was in a a, a Vietnamese um, a fish soup restaurant, and there it was absolutely packed. I mean. It, unbelievable business that this place does and you had a container with maybe a hundred chopsticks at the end of the table and you grab your chopsticks you you know, you know made sure they're the same length you know makes it easier to use and and you, you start eating your food and often there are common dips even when you have your own bowl there are like common dips which you of like a, a salt or or, or a, a sauce that you, you dip something in and there's often a common salad bowl. Um, now, when it comes to uh, um, other other uh, Asian food, there's often multiple dishes on the table. And you may have experienced this yourself. And you take a portion. Now, that's going into your mouth, and then that's going back into the bowl. Into your mouth, going back into the bowl. The other thing is that that is then going into, and I saw this, there was a bowl, and it was one bowl of water, and they were washing maybe... 300 chopsticks in that bowl. Now, what I'm saying is if any single one of those people had the virus and they'd mm, give it a good dosing to the chopstick, there's a potential for that spreading to all of those other chopsticks or a, a proportion of them. So you can see where the certain cultural aspects that you know can result in people uh, spreading the disease very much faster in, in one culture than another. Now, People might say, well, okay, in India, which I have a lot of experience of, uh, they, they eat with their hands. You know, they, they they get the rice and they get the food. And I've done this myself. And you put it into your mouth like so. You, you scrape it off like that. And, you know, all of my staff in India, they had never eaten with a knife and fork. Never eaten with a chopstick, obviously, but never eaten with a knife and fork. And I, I taught them to do that. But anyway, the point is this. Um, because they all eat with their hands... They all go, they all, all restaurants, all houses next to the dining table, they have a sink with soap. And it's it's absolutely automatic. People will go and wash their hands thoroughly with soap before they eat, and they will do the same afterwards. And so, you, you know, uh, they are very good at the, the hand hygiene in India and uh, uh, so, so there's that. And, and, and if you think in the West, we, we won't suffer from this kind of thing. I would like to think about the modern eateries and the modern places that we get our food from. Uh, so let's say you're going to the supermarket these days. Often there's a, there's a, a, a checkout uh, counter, which is automatic, and you weigh your own stuff and, and you use a touch screen. Well, what if one person has gone <laughs> or rubbed their eyes and then they use the touch screen Potentially up to nine days, that touch screen is going to be causing um, a, a, a vector to uh, infect potentially many, many people. Um, even if they haven't sneezed, even if they had a mask on, you know, they would put it on that touch screen. Again, there are big supermarket chains, uh, sorry, uh, uh, restaurant chains now that have these large touch screens. You go and you order your burger or, burger or your chicken or whatever, and that is a huge vector then people eat a burger with their hands. People eat sandwiches with their hands. They eat baguettes with their hands. They eat, they eat fruit with their hands. They eat hot dogs with their hands. They eat crisps with their hands, literally licking the fingers. But how many people in the West really these days have the same kind of culture that they have in India where before you eat, you thoroughly wash your hands. And after you eat, you thoroughly wash your hands. I don't I don't, I don't know how many people can look in the mirror and honestly say that every member of their family does that now in, say, the UK or America or whatever. I know I know. when I was growing up as a kid, we were always playing outside, so we always had to go and wash our hands before we came in and eat. But uh, because 
you know, uh, management of bacteria has got so good and because health care is so good and, uh, and, and available, maybe people have got a little bit complacent. Now is not the time to become complacent or be complacent. Uh, just because you think you're living in a better environment, if this hits home, you, you need to start thinking about uh, washing your hands. This is the main thing that you can do. This is the main vector. You shake a person's hand, you hold a hand, a door handle, you do a toilet seat, you touch, do, do a touch screen, you, you're handling fruit and veg in the supermarket. These, these are your biggest vector because what do you do? You might, oh, there's something between my teeth. I've just given myself a disease. Oh, um, oh, oh, oh there. Oh, oh, I'm just going to rub my eyes. Oh, no, I've just put the disease into my eye. This is the biggest vector. And you need to be thinking about this all of the time. Uh, should should this come your way? And, and quite frankly, it's just good hygiene to, to look after your hands. It's something that, you, that nurses should do and do do all over the world. But it's also, as someone who does experiments, and you're handling chemicals, you know, that, that may be toxic, or e even if you do use gloves, it's it's good practice to wash your hands, uh, both before for contamination purposes and afterwards. So, yeah, I, I would recommend really thinking about this hand vector. So, um, now, the, the, other, the other thing is is, is san sanitation. Um, now, in a lot of uh, uh, Asian countries, so for instance, in Vietnam, even when I was in China, um, you, you have these crouch down toilets. It's, it, they call it the Indian toilet, actually, but it, you actually are not touching the toilet seat. <laughs> There's no toilet seat. You are only touching your own body, and it's just your, your, your shoe paste, uh, uh, soles that are the touching the toilet area. So um, again, those the, the the type of toilets they have in in some Asian countries actually mean they're less likely to to have that particular particular vector uh, uh, to getting the mill. On on the flip side, there are the, they do tend to have, for instance, in India, I've I've seen a lot of open sewers, and I, I've seen flooding open sewers, and, and that that's not good. But in the big cities, uh, and and so forth, the, these things just aren't a problem. So um, when it comes to places like Japan, um, Japan is uber clean. You you go into a supermarket that the people have gloves on, they have masks on, they they even have hair nets on. They won't let you lean over the packaged goods that are in that are double packaged and packaged in a freezer or, or and so forth. Um, you know, everyone's got to be hands off. So they are hyper good at uh, uh, managing uh, um, you know pathogen risks. So you know. Um, in the case of uh, India, India, because almost no one has, or a very large proportion of the population doesn't, do not have a fridge, they tend to harvest something and cook it. Now, this, this is something where India, you know, in the financial crisis, India didn't really suffer on bulk because there's something like 800 million farmers there and they look after themselves. They don't go to a market to get their food. <laughs> they don't ask someone else to deliver something to them. You know, they, they're literally growing it on their own plot of land and they feed themselves. So surprisingly, uh, India um, may be much more resilient to this than societies where we're reliant on a, a long supply chain of, of, of food. We, we then have it delivered to us or it's it's, it's fast food that we eat with our hands or, or we, we use a touch screen to order it. You know, you need to think Anytime you're using your hands or someone else is using their hands, uh, uh, is that a pathway to to me uh, um, getting infected? Again, South Korea, it, um, it, 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 the, on the flip side, uh, some of these countries like South Korea and Japan, um, uh, uh, they have extremely high density of population. So if you go to Korea, there's, there's block after block after block of, of high density uh, accommodation. And you know, at some point there is a choke point in those buildings. And, you know, if you're in a community which has one of those choke points, that there should be some, you should think about procedures to uh, maybe clean the entrance way to your building and, and have a rotor. Now, there are, um, you know, a, a, a very small amount of uh, um, uh, uh, bleach can uh, uh, deal with uh, th this virus. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in that, and you can look into that. But if, if you are a community leader, I would suggest that you know keeping those common areas uh, really clean, and, and uh, the person doing that cleaning or instructed to do that cleaning 
is is someone that that has the right protective equipment on whilst they're doing the cleaning and then they throw that protective equipment away i think that 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 reduces the opportunity for uh, that choke point to infect a lot of people in in a building and so um yeah, so for, for those that missed it, I, I just talked through, um, so I, I actually talked through a couple of things. It was the spitting culture in China. And then um, I, I, I talked about uh, chopsticks. And I, I, I now want to talk about uh, new Lunar New Year. Now, I, I was in Vietnam for Lunar New Year. And uh, this is a time where, it, you know, particularly in China, but also in Vietnam, um, uh, the migrant workers, this is the first time to uh, in the year where they can get a sensible amount of time to visit their family. And they tend to rather, you know, if they live a long way away from the family, which is very possible in both countries, um, the, the, the little breaks on a weekend, the time they get off, let's say on a Sunday or whatever it is, th that isn't enough time for them to go home. So they really focus on this, uh, um, this lunar holiday, all of the family and all of the distant relatives gets together. And you you will typically be required to take part in communal meals, and uh, the seven people with I think it's the, it was the majority at one time in Hong Kong that, that were infected. Seven people sat down for one meal, uh, and it was a hot pot, so they're using their chopsticks, and they all get infected, uh, presumably from one person that was there. And and this is this is something you could, you, you really really need to uh, think about. This this is different. Um, uh, uh, vector to the kind of way, I mean, ironically, <laughs> if you're living in a culture that uses a lot of disposable packaging, you're, you're probably in a situation where you're not, there's less likelihood for you to get this uh, uh, transmission vector. And so, um, so for instance, in, in Chinese New Year and, and Vietnamese New Year, which is, they do coincide, it's Year of the Rat, um, you, you'll, you'll, Ha be sitting there at say a relative's house and then people from the community uh, uh, who are friends or people that are neighbors or, or or work colleagues very often work colleagues and relatives and distant relatives and all of their children they will come in and it's almost the requirement to sit down you have like a little pot of tea and you have these little teacups and i witnessed literally scores of times uh, the tea being poured out into a cup that I've just seen someone else being uh, someone else using, and so I think there was a perfect storm. However, the virus uh, first came out, uh, that it what got to the point of of, of Lunar New Year uh, before uh, really being recognised. Everyone had gone through. They would have gone through this cultural thing of of eating together. With their chopsticks of, of drinking and and you know in 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 Vietnam it's all about the rice wine and and, and uh, you know uh, celebrating and good fortune for the coming year. Um, the, the the opportunities for spreading this are absolutely astronomical. Um, everyone's hugging and, and you know uh, it's just it it's it's really sad that this virus came out at this time. And, and wasn't the, the the potential for it to propagate from person to person um, uh, wasn't uh, uh, properly recognised uh, before Lunar New Year? It's just that that for me is a is a real tragedy. Um, so uh, you know, I, I, so I've gone over um, uh, some cultural aspects. Um, you know, the, <laughs> people in the West they have these ideas that that these people, uh, they're, they're not that clean. Well, actually, you know, um, there are uh, many Asian cities are absolutely <laughs> incredibly clean. Um, uh, so, you know, you want to put those things aside. I, I think really it's it's this and, and this and the, the culture of Lunar New Year that really was just terrible uh, for the initial um uh, disease spreading. So I'm going to look at some of your questions and then I'm going to um, look at something else. There is reporting of some vomit and nausea, uh, um, but uh, 
<laughs> Every other dude has an Asian wife these days. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, I, I, you know what, I, uh, McClure, I, I didn't really see anyone spitting in Hong Kong. Uh, I don't know about Taiwan. Uh, my brother was married uh, to a, to a Taiwanese. Um, the, the the in Taiwan, and and this is true of some states in India, they do spit, but they spit what's called pan, and 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 what that is, it's it's a beetle nut, uh, which is a type of nut from a palm palm tree, which uh, is um, it's it's like a speed. Um, it's a, 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 and then they, they mix it with what's called a piper leaf. Uh, and th those two together are mixed with some slake lime, often some tobacco, and it goes into a little pass and they chew it. And you'll see these people with these really red teeth. And th the great thing is, is that this is a great antibacterial and antiviral in, in part because it's got slake lime in there and, and that's just caustic and it, it kills everything. But that pr free bases those drugs that are in there uh, which is what the people get addicted to, uh, but it actually causes uh, uh, gingivitis, and their teeth, <laughs> their teeth, uh, their gums uh, recede, and then their teeth fall out. And so, but you know, particularly in in uh, uh, Calcutta, you will see red spots everywhere. That it's a, it's a, I think it was it was a dry state when I was there last, uh, which means no alcohol. But then they're all taking the pan, and th this is a big cultural thing in, in uh, uh, Taiwan, and people are spitting, but. To be honest, I think the spit that would come out from someone that was chewing pan uh, uh, or beetle nut um, would, would actually be not infectious because <laughs> if your human can't really survive, I'm not sure the virus, if it was infectious, it's not going to stay infectious for long. I think one thing about the potential five to nine days living outside of the body, this might be true in climates which are not so hot. Um, the, the, it, it, I, I have a family member in Melbourne where the, I think there's currently uh, four cases. And so there's a, there's a bit of concern for me there personally. Uh, but Melbourne is in its summer, uh, uh months. So in fact, the whole of Australia is. And so, uh, really for me, um, I, I know there's been some suggestion that come April, this will come down and because it's the natural kind of nature of this thing. But, um, uh, it, it, I, I, I'm looking at what happens in Australia because if, if it can uh, survive or spread um, significantly uh, in a hot Australian uh, summer, um, then maybe we can't be so sure that it's going to die back um, uh, come April time in, in China and in Asia and other nations which uh, it, it has reached so far. So that, that's one thing. The other thing is um, there's been some commentary about... Um, uh, sulfur dioxide emissions and saying that that may be due to body burning. I, I have another take on this. Um, you know, I, in North uh, Vietnam, it was around about eight, nine degrees uh, at night, um, but there were still plenty of mosquitoes around to bite you. And uh, when my when I was about seven, we, we, we grew a lot of tomatoes and uh, we would use sulfur uh, to fumigate the greenhouses at the end of the growing season. And this is to kill all of the bugs in the atmosphere, basically. And I wonder whether, I, I don't know, I, I, I haven't looked at the temperature in Wuhan. Could it be that um, mosquitoes are a vector for this? I don't know, but if you are if you don't know all the vectors, you'd probably wanna just say, let's get rid of all of the vectors. And so maybe there was some deliberate sulfur dioxide to kill something, I, I don't know, and, and maybe people are misreading that as, as being um, due to uh, cremation. I don't know. What I can say is I watched my father put a pile of sulfur in the concrete pathway in the greenhouse in order to fumigate it at uh, the end of the growing season. And uh, so, you know, that, that's just the reality. And I, and I do know in China they, they they uh, process uh, herbs and, and medicines also with the sulfur dioxide. And, and so I'm, I'm less, less certain on that. Um, now, the, the thing about vectors is it, like the, people have said, oh, it comes from a bat. Well, bats eat about 5,000 to 6,000 or something mosquito sized uh, insects, maybe a, a night. And um, those mosquitoes are sucking on everything that could have a virus. And now it's not to say that the virus will go into the uh, mosquito itself, um, but 
bats have developed this amazing uh, ability to have a have a, a disease in them but not really go uh, get try to get rid of it so quickly and so they end up being coming carriers and and this actually is something that has been studied and and been spearheaded by um the wuhan lab um but th that's that's another so uh, subject um so th there is some plausibility to to the bat vector but really at this stage it, it's of less interest to me you know uh, i heard uh, today that there are uh, four people that were infected in Brighton, which is just uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes drive from my family in the UK. I have family in Melbourne. There's there's cases there. So, you know, to think this won't necessarily come to a, a, a town near you sooner or, or uh, uh, this season, or it might not come until next season. I think really it, it's, it's a time for us all to take stock and think, okay, um, uh, what can I do, you know, just to, to, to just reduce my chances of getting the common cold or the flu, you know, <laughs> let's, let's not do that. Um, so if you've got a chance to go and get the flu jab and, and, and so forth. Anyway, I, I've got a, a couple of things that, uh, around me here that I, I want to talk about. And before I get onto that, there's, there's a couple of other places that, that you can get this as a vector. And these come into the things that I want to show you. And, and one, one is feces. So, uh, um, you know, if, if you're living in a, a society that has open sewers, these are things to be aware of. Um, uh, it, there is a potential for this to be airborne like the measles. And if that's the case, the, 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 the on or whatever it is, the, the ability for this to spread is very, very huge and so what i'm really looking at in that case for the for the the um transmission uh, capability uh, of this virus uh, is 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 the uh, cruise ship off the coast uh, i think it's yokohama or, or in japan and um the, the reason it might there's a couple of factors that lead into the thinking that it might be airborne there's the chinese spraying in the streets there's a whole home fa family infected during a hot pot meal um tens of millions of people being forced to stay in their homes um and you know uh the suits that they're using you, you know they are fully sealed now and they're working for 12 hour shifts in them which means you know why would you want to fully seal it uh, if it wasn't like something that potentially could be airborne and they're made off the ship that they're making sealed tunnels to get people off the cruise ships and actually they're sending the ship out to sea now you could argue it's because some people might get you know, stir crazy and want to jump off, and then they're in in the larger community potentially to spread the disease. But it could also be people coughing over their <laughs> their uh, balcony, and they don't want that to be causing a problem. So, um, yeah. So uh, the vectors that you can deal with, um, if this comes to you, I'll say this now because this is probably the single most important. Uh, thing I, or valuable thing I can say is if you are ever going to panic you better panic first <laughs> you just gotta panic first if, if, if you're ever gonna panic about this you've got to panic first um and then it's not really panic uh and so um you know there are things that you can get right now which are not expensive they might be expensive by the time it, it hits your town but it's not expensive now so you can get these which we use in our science experiments uh, these are nitrile gloves. They're inexpensive. They're easy to put on, easy to get off. If you have a, um, a latex allergy, you can get ones that, you know, that there are latex versions and and, and so forth. But uh, check check if, if you have an allergy to it. Some of them are powder, some of them powder free. But anyway, these are inexpensive. You can get them in box of hundreds. And uh, you, you could use these. Let's say you've got a, a family member that's uh, ill. Um, uh, and you want to care for them because, you know, I had a father who went to hospital uh, and he went in for a basic hip operation. He was tested for any problems before he went, uh, when he arrived, had nothing, had the hip operation, got vancomycin, methicillin, resistant staphylococcus aurora, VMRSA. He spent 10 and a half months in hospital and to cut a long story short, it killed him. A hospital acquired infection. Now, one of the hospitals in Wuhan, a good proportion of the people in there got the, they were in there for something else and they got the infection in the hospital. So 
uh, and and very very quickly, uh, if it takes hold, your hospital will not have any ICU beds available or or good beds available, and that's the case it would seem in uh, China in some areas. And so um, the idea that you can have a plan to manage this uh, disease, which may just be for your family, no more than a common cold, okay? It may look not look more than the cold or flu, depending on, you know, some members in your family, like in mine, we, we, we all get the same bug, but some of us get it worse than others. And, and, and this will probably follow that same pattern, but it's best to be safe. Um, and for the sake of a few pounds, uh, get yourself some gloves so that when you're handling a sick member of the family, you're minimizing the chance of you getting it and, and you can dispose of it and like bin it, kill it. Like even if it takes five days to die in the bin, it's not on your hand ready to go into your eyes. So these are inexpensive things that you can get and you'll always find a use for them. You know, so so what if you don't, the disease doesn't come, you, you can make do crafts with your kids or whatever, or you might like to try, start some uh, open uh, live experiments uh, uh, following some of the work that our project does in low energy nuclear reactions. These, you, you, you'll you need these for doing that. Now, uh, I've got a couple of different um, uh, masks here. Uh, this is, uh, really, you need a, a, a N95 class mask. It's a mask that is uh, capable of dealing with the particulates that you want to exclude. But anyway, this is the type of mask uh, that the, I purchased, or this was purchased in Vietnam, and it sort of goes around here and around the ears. You might have seen people wearing these. Um, these are great mostly these are great mostly for someone who's got something not infecting other people so <laughs> because if they go <clears throat> it's going into here if they go or they have a you know a fit it's it's going into here and you can then dispose of that it's not going into the broader environment it's it's much easier, and, and so, you know, one of our project's aims over the coming years is, is to look at the low-energy nuclear reactions work we do and fix Fukushima in situ, fix uh, NOE TAC Atoll in situ, deal with the radiation at its source rather than it being spreading into the Pacific. If you can prevent using one of these masks, a member of your family or a member in your company or whatever, from spreading a disease. Now, someone might just think they've got a cold. But isn't it just wise to to have one of these just in case? Now, if you go to Japan, for instance, for instance, you know when I was there in in Sendai and in, in, in Tokyo, you know these these are used by 30, 40, 50 percent of the, the the population anyway. So they're already using these. So these these are great for people not infecting other people. Um, this actually I, I purchased in Japan. Uh, here, so th this was this was from uh, Vietnam. Um, the ones I normally use for my experiments that really just uh, to to deal with particulates. This is uh, as it says here. You can see here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it will focus on that. Um, it says virus here. Virus. Okay. So uh, let's have a look at this package. And. You know, this will probably be not much, uh, not very dissimilar to what we've just seen. In fact, no, it's 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 quite similar. So essentially, in fact, I think probably these ones in in Vietnam are, are better. They, they seem to, I think, some activated carbon or something in there. Um, uh, th these are slightly thicker. So maybe, maybe these have some sort of chemical in there as well that's going to deal with the virus. I don't know because I'm not an expert on these, but it does say on here that it deals with uh, viruses here, uh, there, somewhere, uh, there. Um, and uh, so, you know, again, this this uh, stretch, uh, comes around the, the back of the ears and very easy to put on, take off. Actually, on the 27th of January, I came downstairs, uh, uh, I came downstairs and I came into the hotel lobby and this bus with about 45 people had arrived and everyone had masks on. And I thought, oh! <laughs> so, um, you know, but then it was good because they weren't able to infect me on my last day there as I was preparing to, to go out. So um, now the, in, in um, I think it's in, in Indonesia right now, a, a, a pack of these is 
more expensive than um, uh, an, a gram of gold or something. It's just something ridiculous. The, the point is, is these things can be inexpensive for you now. Um, they could get very expensive or just simply not available at all. And where these may be useful is like if you're breathing in and these these droplets for something else has sneezed in the shop just before you walked into the shop you don't know they've sneezed um and you breathe in it gets stuck in here when you get home you can throw it away so you know th they do offer some protection the other thing that i see a lot of people not doing and and, and i can't understand why because it it wouldn't cost a lot it might look stupid but it might look cost a lot is the eyes here are a real vector for the, the droplets here. And um, so very simply, this was bought in uh, Vietnam. This is uh, just your uh, average swimming goggles. They tend not to steam up quite so much as a mask because you're not breathing into them. But they will stop uh, your eyes uh, uh, receiving any, any droplets uh, if you're out and about or even if you're tending a loved one. Um, these things might seem ridiculous, but it this costs um, about four five dollars, and you know maybe you want to go swimming, <laughs> maybe you've already got it in the house. Um, uh, uh, so I'm just going to go through a, a few things here. Uh, who's saying what? Uh, okay, so. <laughs> Someone says, I want to catch this virus. You know what? Bizarrely, and I'm not recommending this, it might be better to catch the virus early <laughs> because there might be a hospital bed for you. And if the chances of you getting a complication is the same at any point, it's better that you get the complication first. It's a bit like the line I said earlier, if you're going to panic, panic first. It only it's kind of flipping it on its head. If you're going to get infected, get infected first because you can go and get all the healthcare before all the healthcare workers have got it. Um, I remember when I was, uh, God, when was it? There was a really, really bad case of flu going around. And I think I was 13 or 14. I'm 48 now. So that, that puts the timestamp on it absolutely every other child in the boarding school I was at, all 760 of them had the flu, but three. And they had converted the classrooms into uh, sanatoriums, into basically what you're seeing in China, just on a slightly smaller scale. And, um, you know, it was, it was quite scary. Um, I don't think anyone died, actually. Certainly, that wasn't something I was focused on. But what I can say is that um, when it came to me, I unfortunately felt a little sniffle before I went home for the Christmas holidays, and I had it over the two weeks of Christmas. And I thought, everyone else got time off at school, and I lost my Christmas. So, you know, there could be some arguments to say, and I'm not recommending it. I, there could be some arguments to say, if you're going to get it, get it early. Um I did some work today for a virologist and his wife. This is Strikeman uh, and his nurse, and they are concerned about the CV in the UK that all I will say is I don't want to spread fear, okay? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, what I will say is I think there's, uh, if you missed the beginning of this uh, video, there's very, very specific cultural things in China that, I believe, combined with the Lunar New Year uh, that made it really, really, really unfortunate for them and, and why they got so many infections so quickly. You can go back and when I, when we'll finish the live stream, you can go back and, and review those points. I don't really want to go over them again. Okay. Uh, colloidal silver, yes, uh, that can boost your immune system. I will talk about something also from our research. And, and that is, uh, uh, and, and this is not a recommendation, but you can go and look into it. And, and this is oxyhydrogen gas. Um, it it uh, produces a type of material. I'm, I'm going to talk about this in some of our, um, uh, some up and coming videos with respect to work that's gone on in Russia. Uh, but essentially, uh, it would appear to make a gas 
that in the case of George Wiseman has been able to treat a wide range of ailments. In the case of Alexander Shishkin, he's been able to produce water from a system that produces cavitation. And that water has been able to cause uh, um, uh, uh, plants to germinate a lot faster and a lot healthier. And I will, I will talk about this in, in, in future videos. And also, uh, Roy Shinamaza uses his uh, gas and uh, in a cancer clinic. And so I'm going to talk about that. But um, what they found with uh, this type of radiation that comes out of these devices, that they, they can stimulate the production of lymphocytes. And this is one problem that you get with this condition. It, the pathology is the lymphocytes go down. And if your lymphocytes go below a certain level, then the virus can take over and you start to get multiple organ failure. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, potential things that you can use, and I have them here uh, that I'm going to personally use. I'm not a doctor. I did spend three years at SmithKline Beach and I worked in the vir virus and, 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 and antibacteria um, site in Worthing, but I, I, that is not my expertise. But I will talk about the, some personal things that, that I, I, I am doing. But what they found was is... Um, the, these technologies, these uh, uh, mixed oxyhydrogen gas or the radiation that comes out of the reactors that we we, we operate, um, if you expose mice to it before you expose them to a, a cancer-causing dose of radiation, then they are less likely to get cancer. If you expose them to the cancer-causing dose of radiation and then expose them to this type of radiation, then it promotes the cancer. Basically, this type of radiation, they call it a field form of life in, 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 in Russia. Um, they, it, it, it accelerates life. And so you, you, you kind of want, if you're going to ever use it, um, then you use it before uh, you are get, get exposed to the pathogen, and so you in heighten your your immune system. So anyway, there's other ways you can heighten your immune system. That's good good amounts of sleep, low stress, uh, uh, um, good diet, and and I just want to talk about a few dietary things that um, uh, I uh, and uh, uh, for, for for other things, but also are are good in this instance. So uh, first up is um, uh, you know in the SARS outbreak. Um, what they found was there's, there's this reaction by your own body's immune system that then comes and destroys parts of your organs and causes like pneumonia, which is where your al al alveoli are in your uh, your lung, they kind of flood and then you can't get so much oxygen in. So this is why um, they're having to do, you know, o provide oxygen, forced oxygen, uh, and even they're, they're using artificial lungs when it gets really bad. But some people are dying from heart attacks. Some people are dying from uh, kidney failure. And this is, you know, the kind of thing this where your body, it has this thing called a cytokine storm and it goes out and it, it, you destroy yourself. And I know this all too well because I get gout. And so if I eat things like pulses and, and, and beer, drink beer, which is terrible because I live in beer heaven, I have to drink things like this. This is Kefola. It's a, a Czech version of cola because they didn't have Coke during the Soviet times. Anyway, mm. Um, I get gout, which is an autoimmune response uh, in, in, or it's like instant arthritis. But th this is kind of like, I think in SARS, you could get infected and then like within a day, you can have this pneumonia, this, this uh, sudden onset respiratory um, failure uh, and, and you died. And so what you really kind of want more than almost anything in your toolbox are antihistamines. And the one, uh, and anti-inflammatories, and the, the one anti-inflammatory that I use, which is natural, which anyone can go out and get uh, in Europe and America, I think in America, but definitely all over Europe, um, which is al also like the best natural or one of the best natural antihistamines is nettle. So uh, I have it here. I got it here and uh, I dry them using a fruit and vegetable dryer. Actually, it's the same dryer that I use to dry my mushrooms that I harvest from the forest. And so here is a nettle leaf. It's not, not stingy when it's like this. Uh, and so I've got a whole load of them in there. And this makes a really great tea. And the nettles themselves you can eat as a vegetable. People during the Second World War in the UK, they used to eat nettles because they couldn't grow the veg. And, and so uh, this is stinging nettle. Uh, and so in, in Europe, I would uh, recommend that uh, you get yourself some of this. You can harvest as much as you like. It's free. And um, you can get yourself a, a food dryer, dry it off, 
and it keeps very very well in your old jam jars you know and and you you can use that and this is to deal with the um or to help deal with the um kind of uh, reaction that you you your body creates which can actually be much more dangerous than anything else now there are some other uh, you can do a bit of research online and find other antihistamines but you know my my father and mother always used to say uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away well actually uh, another uh, uh, great source of antihistamine is you can go and look up why but basically apples that's what you need to know and and also uh, pineapples here um, if you're not so much into, um, you know, uh, <laughs> natural things and you, you, you think a pill is the solution to everything, um, you can get something like uh, loritidine. So th these are kind of like anti-histamines uh, that you would use uh, for, um, uh, you know, hay fever. So I, I have these for uh, a particular part of the spring here in Europe. I, I get hay fever. So and, and these things. They're cheap now, but they might be really, really expensive at some point or just simply not available. So, uh, <laughs> yes, Kefola is good, Troll McClure. <laughs> it has less sugar than Coke and it has more caffeine. So it's like nearly perfect. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, there are other some people are, don't respond well to loritidine and there's other antihistamines out there so you can just go to the pharmacy these these are over the counter medicines now what i will say with any of the medicines that i mentioned like i say i'm not a doctor go and do your own research ask your own physician but um uh, the, these things are uh, again inexpensive uh, and and uh, you know uh, widely available now and you might need to use them in the future but with any of these kind of medications um only use them at the time that you think that you're gonna suffer from the condition i mean i, I have no problem drinking this twice a day okay uh because it's natural but you shouldn't be uh, uh putting everything on on the go straight straight from the get-go because you because you might just have a common cold or, or whatever so um and also anyway so the other the other thing is to keep your temperature down. There's a mushroom in the Czech Republic called the Václavska, and I go and harvest this. I don't have any with me dried right now, um, but I will tell you it's very very common. You can find it in the forest, and it's an antipyretic. It does the same job that your um, uh, paracetamol or your acetaminophen does. Now the thing about um, acetaminophen, it might make you feel better, or in fact any pa pa uh, antipyretic. Um, might lower your temperature and make you feel better. But there is a school of thought in physicians where the body is deliberately raising the temperature to fight off the infection. And in fact, what some people say is that when the temperature is raised, the virus can't replicate. And so the body actually gets the upper hand and then can come down on top of the virus. So, you know, uh, don't just take paracetamol you know, for children, the, 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 the temperature issue can be a big of a problem. So again, consult your doctor. But think about whether you should be using paracetamol or you, you should be riding the fever. You know, you need to keep warm. You need your bed rest and so on and, and, and not take this lightly. Essentially, what people are saying is if you if you start to recover by the end of the second week, you're good to go. If you start to go into the kind of complications after the second week, then you really definitely need to see medical help. Um, uh, and and you, you you will have to make your own judgments on that. So the the other thing is is a, a, a kind of anti-inflammatory. Again, you, when your body is attacking itself like it does with my gout, you need anti-inflammatories. And so one of the best anti-inflammatories out there, and it's also superfood, and it's in a lot of Indian food. So this is hilarious because the Indians have this hand washing culture before they're eating. They also don't sit on the toilet seat. Uh, they, 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 they kind of crouch. And, and uh, they also have this in their diet in abundance. So yeah, that and the fact that they, they look after themselves for the most uh, um, uh, for, for the most part, you know, most of them are self-sufficient or at least look after most of their food themselves. They're going to do pretty well. Um, but anyway, the thing I want to talk about here is turmeric. And so this is uh, Vietnamese turmeric. This is fresh uh, turmeric. You may not be able to get this type of turmeric where you are. 
uh, you might only be able to get it in the powder form. And this is a Daddy-O pack uh, of uh, powdered uh, turmeric. What you can do uh, is get the active ingredient, which is cucumin, uh, and you can get that maybe in, in dietary supplements. And um, it, it's one of the best anti-inflammatories, uh, natural anti-inflammatories that there are. Two things to remember. Um, if you really want to get the most out of it, you have to mix it with pepper. This is this is a, a cracked pepper here. This has a chemical in it, which or, or a compound in it that mixes with this, and it makes your ability to absorb the cucumin out of the turmeric twenty times more absorption. The other thing to remember is you need fat in there, at least some butter. You know, for me, uh, uh, a lamb curry. Uh, uh, is fantastic because you've got some fat in there, you've got uh, the the spices that are needed, uh, and you end up uh, uh, with this uh, stuff that's uh, very good for anti-inflammatory and for dealing with uh, bacteria and so forth. So um, other anti-inflammatories that you can get, which are very easy to get, um, are, you know, the common uh, tomato. There we go. So um, uh, got to love the tomato. And so those, those are the kind of things that uh, you might want to think about um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, things to have in the house. The other thing is um, you should uh, uh, prepare food. Now, before the financial crisis, I actually I predicted the financial crisis a number of years in advance. And I actually bought one Christmas for each member of my family, each family unit. I bought them one month's supply of food. Now, you know, whatever. The point is, is that when they came to use that food, it actually would have cost them 70% more. So it was a it, much better than putting money in the bank. Um, and so uh, what I would suggest is, is to consider your risks. And if you think it's worth doing, go out and buy yourself uh, for your family uh, about a month and a half of food. If, if we're saying it takes three weeks for someone to go through the cycle, you don't want to all be ill at the same time. You maybe you, you you could imagine that it would take one and a half months, and and th if you had the food in your pantry or your larder or whatever you call it, um, and you were able to uh, look after your family without really travelling from the house, but the water that comes out of your tap, boil it in the home. Uh, in, uh, under these circumstances, you, uh, even if you have good water, and then use that to prepare uh, your food. Um, I, I bought pulses, I bought uh, canned goods, I bought uh, rice, I bought pasta, and I will be doing the same. If you're going to panic, panic first. Um, have these things uh, prepared, uh, your little survival pack. Um, and you know what? If China and other Asian countries, so for instance, uh, Thailand and, uh, and um, uh, Vietnam, they are massive exporters of rice. China export all kinds of different things. If there are food products that you want to buy as your staple, for instance, like Thai rice, uh, and uh, th those people are then not able to grow that rice, you might find that the best investment you can make is to actually prepare for the worst, but then enjoy the the proceeds of, of investing in that food late later in the year or in in the following year. So, um, uh, my my family were all very happy <laughs> to work their way through the rations that I had given them uh, before the financial crisis, and uh, uh, I will be doing for my family uh, that same thing. Whilst things are not, no one's panicking. I, I'm not panicking either. I'm doing this. I'm planning. For potentiality, you know, and, and, you know, this time last week, it was just in China. Now I have one family member in Melbourne with four cases down the road. And I have one, uh, um, many family members in the UK with just 15 minutes down the road. Uh, uh, there were four cases in Brighton. So, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you have to be uh, aware that <laughs> this doesn't necessarily going to respect your opinion, um, um, but you can prepare for it. So the other thing... Um, other than anti-inflammatories and antihistamines, is something to stop the coughing reflex. And, and that is uh, uh, something like dextromorphan, uh, how do you say it? Dextromethorphan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some links. I'm gonna put a few links in here. So, so these are kind of an antihistamine um, here. 
like I say, these are just something to look at, um, but you make your own decisions. I'm putting these into the uh, chat window. These are an anti-inflammatories. I've got a picture here of, here yeah. I go, and dextromethorphan. And what this does, this, um, this particular drug, and it's in a lot of uh, things that stop you from coughing, like um, you can get it in pill form, you can get it in uh, syrup form. Uh, this, for me, would stop me damaging my throat before I hit the really nasty part of the uh, um, the uh, uh, cycle of the disease. Therefore, my lungs are, uh, and, and my strength are, are not completely uh, denuded. Um, you do not need to take uh, uh, dextromethorphan unless you need it. Do not take paracetamol unless you really, really think you need it. But to be honest, like I say, you need to take a doctor's opinion. But um, the the this this particular drug, acetaminophen, um, it lowers the temperature. But as I said, the body being hot stops the virus from multiplying, and so your body can then get on top of it. A fever is a fever for a reason. And again, do not take the anti-inflammatory like this in this form unless you really need it i would stock up and prepare for even if it doesn't get to europe in in, in any significant sense or america in any significant sense in in this season it could be ready to go next season at some point they're going to allow the flights and some point you know there's still going to be things shipped from asia um <clears throat> i would get yourself a lot of this freebie this this uh nettles uh in in your uh uh, pantry or larder. So um, and let me see if I've, I've covered the main things that I want to say. The, the reason I'm talking about the, the, through these things is I, I wasn't hearing anyone talking about the, the cultural aspects that could have made, been unique to different groups of people uh, that, and particularly in China and particularly at Lunar New Year, that uh, caused this infection to spread so fast there. And, and, and on that case, uh, actually, there's a funny sign. Whilst that was very bad for them, and it's something that you you wouldn't expect to be repeated in many other cultures, um, there's also another thing is that if, if things aren't coming out of China, actually the number of deaths in America might drop. And and why? Because it, if we're saying that certain certain countries are manufacturing fentanyl, then that will not be getting to the the US, let's say. And and there actually may be an, a net. Uh, a reduction in deaths of middle-aged uh, people because of lack of production of fentanyl or something like that. So uh, bizarrely, um, <clears throat> there's all kinds of ways you can think about this. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> yes, poppy is good against coughing. I, I, as you're from the Czech Republic, I think you're probably referring to poppy seeds, which are uh, widely available uh, in uh, um, pastries in the Czech Republic. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, I think I've I've covered most of the things I want to say. Yeah, I, I do want to drill that point home. Prepare a food pack for your family. That will see you through a six-week period for, let's say, for a four-person four family um, because there's a potential hit in agriculture and some staples may become expensive. So getting the stock in may actually pay a dividend later in the year. Um, okay, so I'm going to run through your questions now and, and then probably wrap it up. So... Iodine is good, and uh, for a nuclear researcher, it's a good good idea to have as well. Yes. Um, uh, the Charles McClure is talking about uh, colloidal silver. Uh, one of our researchers we work with, uh, Dr. George Eagley, who is uh, actually currently in Asia at the moment. Um, he uh, is a big fan of colloidal silver. Uh, you can make it yourself, actually, um, and you can do the research on that. Uh, 
Strike when it may not last, but the, the Spanish flu, which was only called the Spanish flu because the newspapers in Spain started reporting it first, apparently, but that did kill something between a 50 and 100 million worldwide when the population of the world, I think, was probably only a billion. So if this has a similar mortality rate and we are living in societies that are not mostly agrarian, um, uh, we are living in dense cities with common uh, facilities, um, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily like to predict um, that, that this will all blow over. So be calm and prepare or don't prepare you can choose but what i'm trying to do here is is you know show you show you real things that are inexpensive and uh, choices that you can make that could actually save you money later in the year by buying food at this end the front loading it whilst it's still cheap um and and other items whilst they're still cheap which you might use anyway like i say for these nitrile gloves they come in handy you can do crafts with your kids and you can like use two-part epoxy without it going up your fingers and things like that um um and matthew I, i'm not so concerned about india yes uh, um I, I talked a lot at the beginning about uh, the cultural aspects of india and the economic aspects like where many of them look after themselves they're in their own farming communities they don't go to the shops necessarily to buy uh, food and and so forth because they don't have fridges they 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 everything's like fresh and they, they've got this hand washing culture so I, i'm and because of the way they they take the toilet and so forth I, i'm i'm less worried about india i'm more worried about places like singapore like hong kong like the dense cities around the world these are the the breeding grounds where you can have one person walk down down a tube like if, if you look at the 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 tube in hong kong and and uh, in singapore they, they don't have the divisions like they, ha they have the tube in in the uk so uh, you could literally have someone walk uh, in in a uh, a, a singaporean uh, subway and and walk from one i think it was it Sing singapore i think no i think it was in uh, uh seoul you can you can walk down you can see from one end to the other and if, they, if someone was to walk down and cough a few times, they could infect the whole train. Whereas in, in the subway in the UK, they go in one and they come out of it, you, you know. And in India, they don't have many subways. And so uh, India it has this ability to survive all kinds of things, uh, its culture and, and so forth. So I, I'm more worried about the densely packed uh, Asian cities and, and even the, the densely packed uh, European cities. Uh, Blues Doctor, the um, the reported infection rates between men and women are about the same now. Um, in, in SARS, uh, it kind of infected healthy people because, well, it killed. This is affecting kind of everyone. There was some question as to why we're not hearing about any children getting infected. Um, you know, there's some some, some debate about that. Um, but I, I know in Vietnam uh, there was a, I think a three three month old that was infected. Uh, today and um, there was a child uh, born uh, in uh, Wuhan. I think uh, that where there was transmission. Uh, I think we can safely assume that this. Oh, you must assume that this can transmute, tra transmit by almost any method uh, you could imagine. Now. Yes, Blues Doctor, you, you know, the, the rate that this is spreading. I mean, the UK yesterday took an extraordinary decision uh, to pass an, a law to say, if you're, if we want you to go into uh, um, uh, quarantine, you have to. You've got no rights. Uh, and so you, you've already seen it in China. This is going to come to a country to near you. Um I just hope that the laws that they're going to be introducing in order to uh, nip this in the bud are, are not laws that they keep keep after this is over. There is a real problem with the test kit situation. If, if you've seen the 
supposed infection, uh, confirmed infections in China has gone up and it's hit a brick wall and gone straight flat. And and this is because they can only produce whatever it is, 6,000 kits, and, and some of them fail, and, and then they need to do a double test on an individual. So they can literally only test two or 3,000 a day properly. And so that's it kind of, you can't have any more confirmed infections, whereas, and, and also how many high-rise buildings have got infected people in, and you don't know because they're trying to uh, stick it out at home. Yes, it's it's a, it would appear to be very contagious. Like I say, there's two two. I said earlier in the stream, there's two things I'm really looking at. One is Australia because that is hot. How can this? Um, how good is this disease at, at being infectious in a hot environment? I.e., if if it's in a cool environment, uh, it can survive longer on surfaces. Uh, if it's in a really hot sun environment, you've got the, the the disinfection of the sun and and the, the whole heat thing. It's similar to like uh, the body temperature and during a fever, dealing with it. Uh, I like the phrase, Stephen, planicking. Yes. So don't panic first, planic first. <laughs> Very good. I like it. <laughs> Tonight at eleven doom. <laughs> Would you fly to the Alps skiing from the UK in a few days? No, actually, the, 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 I, <laughs> what what's interesting to me is I, I was considering going to the UK uh, uh, with the kids uh, for half term, which is like next week or so uh, here, uh, and then I was thinking, about, man, maybe I'm flying to Gatwick, and then did this guy go through Gatwick because he flew, did he fly? I don't, I don't know whether he drove from the Alps to Brighton and then infected 10 people in Brighton. But if he flew to Gatwick, which is the airport south of London, you know, these are things that people are going to have to consider who flew where <laughs> the, the, at the very least, um, uh, you need to keep your powder dry because uh, that, that thinking alone, just on a personal decision, there's going to be, Hundreds of millions of decisions along that line. So how how much food or water should a family of four have? Let's say we are quarantined. So there's a difference between dry weight and 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 wet weight. Uh, depending on which country you are in, um, there are countries that provide uh, uh, ready-made ration packs. Uh, America is amazing. One of our uh, directors for the MFMP, they literally, because they live in uh, Minnesota, they uh, uh, have an incredibly cold environment there for a large portion of the year, and they might just get snowed in. So they actually have uh, like a, it's like a garage. I guess it's about mm, uh, five, three meters, five, four meters by about seven meters, and it's all stacked up with shelves, and they've got these containers. But this is for quite a number of people for a period of time for me um you know have about 130 to 150 grams of reconstituted food and plenty of water and uh, mix it up between proteins and and dried fruits and uh, so like pulses and and uh, uh, that have protein in there dried fruits you can even get things like jerky tins uh, and so on um but uh I, th I think you you'll surprise yourself with pastas and 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 rice and, and uh, dried fruits and, and and so forth that that how much you can act how it's actually a great when I, when I did this before the financial crisis I actually went on um uh, online ordering service for Tesco's because I was buying it for my family in another country um and and I actually went down and I I, I on their service, you you can you can see like th this is one product, this is one product, this is one product, and they all had the different price. And so I was trying to optimize the most amount of food for the least amount of money, with reasonable quality. 
And and so you could do that on an online ordering service, and, and that might actually be the best way to to plan for this. And then um, you t how much is one person going to eat? How much is you know realistically? Uh, I, I'm sure there are calculators out there uh, for working out a ration. Uh, I I will do this over the coming weeks, and I'll, I'll share the calculator or the calculations that that I I uh, uh, have made. So uh, you can maybe consider that. Um, but, you know, some people eat more than other people. Um, but, you, you know, when you've got this, you've got to you've got to do not think this cannot happen because it has happened to literally hundreds of millions of people in China. And if you're if you're only allowed one person to go out and there's only one shop that they can go to and, and there's only a few products they can buy. Do you want to be that person that has to go out and do that? And then what are you bringing back to your family? I don't know. What's the worst that can happen if you get a month, month and a half supply of food? You eat it later in the year and maybe you save yourself some money. So, you know, okay. I, I, I don't think it was very expensive uh, uh, when I did it before. I think, I think it was maybe about 80 or 90 pounds, English pounds a head to, to do the ration pack. And it, it was a shocking amount of food, actually. Um, uh, and so... Okay. We don't know if this virus can be carried in pets, dogs and cats, farm animals, etc. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. I mean, for me, um, the big worry is something like mosquitoes. And, and that's why I was concerned when they were spraying the, the, the air and the, the potential that, that sulfur dioxide might be used to, to kill mosquitoes. I don't know. I do know that when I was in Vietnam prior to Lunar New Year, there was a lot of mosquitoes in North Vietnam, which is bo which borders China, southern, southern parts of China, and um, uh, you know, so maybe they have them there, and that's a, that's a consideration. I have a communication. Okay. So um, just to wrap it up, these are Japanese masks, which are, say, their virus pollen. At the very least, these are good. And these are ones bought in Vietnam. At the very least, these are good for stopping you as a member of your family from infecting other members of the family if you maybe think you've got a cold, but it and it might only be a cold. But it actually might be the the coronavirus, so you can slow down the spread to the the other members of your family, so everyone can plan together. Now, there's another thing that you could think about. You you could sign one room in your house to be the ward, as it were. And so, uh, uh, my father, when he had vancomycin methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aurora, we had to visit him with gloves with a face mask and with a full body suit, okay? And we couldn't touch him. We were not permitted to touch him. And so I would recommend that in your, if you have a house in your house, if you have more than one bathroom or toilet, if you're lucky, we don't, but if you're lucky and you do, I would put the person that is ill close to, in that room, which has that extra bathroom, that ensuite bathroom, so that they can go and do basic things like wash themselves, you know, go to the toilet or whatever, maybe being sick, you know, make sure that they're not sick all over the floor. Because imagine if someone's sick on the floor or, or they cough onto the floor or whatever, um, it, you cleaning that up is, is going to be a massive chance of uh, infecting yourself. You know, what does a person do when they wake up in the morning? They go, oh, like that. And they go, oh, like that. And then, then they touch you these are the ways it, it spreads so consider having a place in the house um uh where you can um uh basically isolate them and other than these things if you are going to deal with this up to a point it may be best to get some of these all in one overalls and then when you de deal with your loved one 
to throw them away. Literally one use. You, you can get them from the hardware stores and stuff. So basically, if they cough droplets onto you, you take it off. And when you've taken everything off, you wash. And the procedure for washing your hands is, you know, I'm not a big fan of the back wipe, the bacteria hand wipes that, you know, you can put too much trust in them. A good soap, uh, hot water, uh, run, and wash full around every part in, in between your fingers like that. And I, th I think the phrase is you sing happy birthday twice with the soap and the water. You rinse it off and then you do the whole thing again. Twice. Uh, okay, so another one here. Uh, any Anybody with Rife experience, uh, I guess you're uh, talking about Royal Raymond Rife. Again, the Rife machine most likely would have been creating this field form of life. And I'm going to talk about that um, later. People, I would recommend that you go and visit uh, the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. We are trying to use uh, technology... Um, uh, which you're not allowed to know about. <laughs> but we're going to try and look at uh, this technology to solve the world's energy problem, deal with radioactive waste, and look at its uh, implications to health as well. Um, uh, if you are eating meals, I suggest you give yourself, everyone in the family, a portion from the cooked plate, and then you eat that portion. Uh, avoid sharing food. Um, if you're going to have food that involves the hands, do as the Indians do. Wash your hands using the procedure I've just told you. And just to, to wrap it up, um, if you're in Asia, tomatoes, great. Uh, turmeric, great. M must mix the turmeric with pepper, 20 times more effective absorption of the curcumin. Um, the curcumin in powdered tur turmeric as well. Mix it with fats because the, the curcumin needs to be absorbed with fat. Uh, apple a day keeps the doctor away, and so does the pi pineapple. Uh, these are both anti-histamines. Uh, um, but uh, uh, if as soon as they start growing in the springs, get yourself a load of these nettles. They are absolutely brilliant. If you are going to medicate with extra methorphan for anti-coughing or something similar, uh, or and claritin for antihistamines and panadol for pyuretics, I would suggest you only do these when you have to. Children. It may need the pan the uh, antipyretic more, but uh, um, uh, in in case of adults, uh, seek your doctor's advice. But the fever is there for a reason. It's for killing. It's for killing the uh, allowing the virus, uh, stopping the virus from replicating because it's too hot, and uh, uh, and then the the immune system comes down on top. Um, but in preparation, if if the net is closing in on your community, make sure you get plenty of sleep. Make sure you, you de-stress and make sure you have good food so you are strong and fighting fit for the time uh, that uh, is yours. And like I say, you must have goggles around the house. And if you haven't, these are inexpensive. And uh, if you do have to be the person that goes out to the shops <laughs> to get some food, just like they're having to do in China, this will stop those particles. Look at the people that are working in the hospitals um, they have full, fully sealed suits, uh, which they they completely dispose of once they've used them. When you get your goggles back, you you, you dispose of your mask and your gloves. But when you take your your goggles uh, home, you wash those uh, in sterilized uh, water. And with your fruit and vegetables, wash them, wash them, because other people in the supermarket market might market might have been going. And then touch the fruit, or because they didn't like that one, they moved it over to the other side, and it touched another nice one that you picked up later. Wash them, okay? And ideally, cook your food um, uh, if 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 it hits there. And uh, so I think that's about it from me. Uh, please look at the project. Uh, is Guinness good for fighting off this virus? Well, I think Guinness is it's got iron in it, or or whatever. It's 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 um, you know they they recommend it for a. a, a a wide array of things. But of course, is it just a marketing? I do know that uh, in the Czech Republic, Pilsen is one of the few alkaline beers. And so that's recommended to people uh, with stomach problems because uh, it obviously it's alkaline. So uh, I hope you have enough C at hand and free energy. Uh, riff, riff the park on tables. Yes. Yes. Um, 
uh, avoid using a microwave during this period of time. Uh, uh, if you're going to heat, you cook your food, do it on the pan, on the stove, uh, uh, gas or electric or induction cooker or, or halogen. Uh, uh, avoid the microwave. That is something I might be able to explain a little bit more down the line with some science uh, behind it. Um, but uh, that's my gut feeling right now. Um, so thank you very much. It's been it's been a long one. I hope it's been useful to you. Uh, I need to go because uh, they're going to lock up here in a minute. So keep healthy. Um, look at what the project is doing, the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. We have a YouTube site um, uh, and uh, we are a community interest company uh, and we have researchers and work with researchers uh, all over the world. And we are looking at solving the world's energy problems or helping those that would like to do that to get into position so that they can do that. And we're also looking at fixing the radiation problem in Fukushima and then we take Atoll and Chernobyl. And there are real methods out there. And uh, uh, look after yourself. <laughs>